This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 636, Competitive Advantage, The Power of Embracing Neurodiversity, by Christine Comaford of smarttribesinstitute.com. And hi again, welcome to Optimal Startup Daily. I'm Dan, and I'm here with you every single day, reading to you from some of the best blogs that we can find on entrepreneurship. And we're gonna get right to our post now as we optimize your life. Competitive Advantage, The Power of Embracing Neurodiversity by Christine Comaford of smarttribesinstitute.com. Quote, Neurodiversity may be every bit as crucial for the human race as biodiversity is for life in general. Who can say what form of wiring will prove best at any given moment? Cybernetics and computer culture, for example, may favor a somewhat autistic cast of mind. End quote. Harvey Bloom, journalist and autism advocate. We all know diverse teams perform better. It's been well documented since Carnegie Mellon's collective intelligence work was released years ago. And now a recent article in Harvard Business Review has explained how the next level of diversity, neurodiversity, provides competitive advantage. Neurodiversity includes conditions such as autism, including Asperger's syndrome, dyslexia, dyscalculia, dyspraxia, and ADHD. The goal of the term's creation was to shift the focus from the negative connotation of these conditions toward the positive. Neurodiversity is an idea which asserts that atypical, or neurodivergent, neurological development is a normal human difference that is to be recognized and respected as any other human variation. According to Robert D. Austin and Gary P. Paisano's article in HBR, quote, Most managers are familiar with the advantages organizations can gain from diversity in the backgrounds, disciplinary training, gender, culture, and other individual qualities of employees. Benefits from neurodiversity are similar but more direct. Because neurodiverse people are wired differently from neurotypical people, they may bring new perspectives to a company's efforts to create or recognize value. End quote. I agree. When we understand neurodiversity, we open up a new world of possibilities for our organization. Neurodiversity Talent Opportunities A report by Drexel University found that 58% of young adults, early 20s, with autism are unemployed. This is a huge pool of Generation Zers. We've done a deep dive into what is compelling to Generation Z in the workplace. How can we adapt this to those that fall in the spectrum of neurodiversity? First, let's look at a few of the skill sets that can benefit your organization. Autism spectrum. Gift for detail, enhanced perceptual functioning, high levels of concentration, reliability, technical ability. Dyslexia. Often strong in spatial intelligence, many are 3D thinkers, holistic thinkers, mechanical aptitude, and have entrepreneurial proclivities. And ADHD. Hyper-focused, creative, inventive, spontaneous, and energetic. All of those skills are qualities and traits that we want within different divisions of our organizations. An individual who falls in the neurodiversity spectrum often finds getting in the front door a challenge. How can we, as organizations, make this first step easier for this untapped workforce? Keys to hiring and onboarding success. The hiring and onboarding process for individuals on the spectrum isn't that different from the status quo. A few simple adaptations in the following areas are needed. One. Impact descriptions. Include a space for applicants to highlight any support adjustments they may need at the interview. Two, interview. While the interview is the rock star moment for the candidate, it can be challenging for those on the neurodiversity spectrum. They may have challenges making eye contact, starting or maintaining the conversation, or thinking in abstract ways. You can adjust by asking closed questions, asking questions based on their real life experiences, and prompting the candidate in order to obtain all the information that you need. And three, successful onboarding follows a similar path to what we've discussed previously. One of the adaptations can be made during training. Northwestern University in Chicago found that when using virtual training, eight out of the 15 people who received virtual training found a job or a volunteer position within six months, compared with two of the eight who were not trained. According to Paul Wayman, professor at Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond, Even people with severe autism who might not seem like good candidates for the workplace can do well if given enough initial support. Virtual training may be something that your organization wants to consider for your new team member. After the onboarding period, the path to successful new employee engagement is 1. Clear communication. 
explicit communication about expectations, written and unwritten. Be concise, specific, supported, and honored. Two, performance reviews. On a regular basis and keep them brief. Three, feedback. Sensitive but direct and provide reassurance in stressful situations. And four, office accommodations. These may include accommodating sensory needs, keeping office doors closed, or moving their office to low traffic areas. It's amazing how when we explore our differences, we usually learn something about ourselves. When we can value and accept our own brain, we will more easily accept and value the unique brains of our team. Diversity is always achieved by inclusion. Success stories. Hewlett Packard Australia, SAP, Microsoft, all have initiatives to hire more people on the neurodiversity spectrum. One of the coolest stories I came across was that of Ultra. Ultra has roughly 32 employees and three quarters of them have autism. They found that tapping into this overlooked talent pool is hugely successful. They have little turnover and they feel their testers outperform those at other companies. EY, formerly Ernst & Young, started a pilot program in 2016 with the goal of employing people with autism in order to explore the benefits of having workers of different cognitive abilities, such as greater productivity and building a more talented workforce. They recruited candidates and adjusted their training and onboarding processes. Then a really cool thing happened. The company's managers started to reflect more deeply and stretch to make sure they were communicating in a more effective manner. You just listened to the post titled Competitive Advantage, The Power of Embracing Neurodiversity by Christine Combeford of smarttribesinstitute.com. And a big thank you to Christine, our author today. She is a leadership and culture coach, serial entrepreneur, and New York Times bestselling author of three books. They are Power Your Tribe, Smart Tribes, and Rules for Renegades. For over 30 years, she has helped leaders navigate growth and change by specializing in applied neuroscience, which helps her clients achieve tremendous results in record time. As an entrepreneur, she built and sold five companies with an average ROI of 700%, and she was a software engineer in the early days of Microsoft and Apple. So come by smarttribesinstitute.com to learn a lot more about Christine and uh, check out her work. And I have that linked in this episode's description as well as at oldpodcast.com. But I think that does it for today. I thank you for being a subscriber to the show and I'll see you right back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.